Student loans are a big business. The U.S. has amassed over $1.7 trillion in outstanding student debt. Until recently, it was the largest non-housing debt for more than a decade. The first time it broke $1 trillion was back in 2012. And that's when it caught all the media attention. We've seen a big growth in the cost of education over the past 10 or 20 years, and this has really showed up in the student loans outstanding. But while more than 43 million Americans are currently holding student debt, many are unaware of what exactly happens with their loans. I think it would be pretty difficult for the average American to try to track where their loan actually resides. There exists a market where billions of dollars worth of student loans are packaged and sold as assets known as slabs to some of the biggest investors in America. I would say that most average Americans are not aware of student loan securitizations. These securities are very, I would say, not transparent and it's hard to understanding by average investor. So what exactly are slabs? And how does it help Wall Street profit from student loans? Securitization is the practice of converting assets, usually loans, into securities that can be bought and sold by investors. Wall Street uses securities to trade almost everything you can think of. Auto loans, business loans, and even aircraft leases. Let's say I'm a bank and I want to issue a bunch of loans. After those loans are issued, I can then sell them to a third party in order to securitize them. Now, just because I sold them doesn't mean that I do not get to account for the estimated value of those securities. I've just sold their interest to a third party. So it's a very lucrative arrangement for a corporation. It's a very lucrative arrangement for the investors. The biggest and the most well-known type of asset-backed securities are mortgage-backed securities, or MBS. There were more than $12 trillion worth of outstanding mortgage-backed securities by the end of 2021. Securitization, its history really started off with a mortgage market. And the mortgage market is a much larger market than other forms of consumer credit, especially other forms of uh, financing of consumer credit. So that lends itself to being a much larger market. Student loan asset-backed securities, or SLAPs, refer to securities that are specifically built around student loans. The way that borrowers get student loans is of two ways. If they're getting a federal student loan, they usually apply using FAFSA, right? If they're going to get a private student loan or a private credit student loan, they would apply through a bank or through a lender. The loans that are then created are bundled together into a pool. And these pools are often highly diversified by regions, by school, by borrower type, for example. And the diversification really protects the investor from losses that are idiosyncratic. They're then transferred to a special purpose trust, which is set up to hold the loans and issue the securities. Once that's done, the securities are then rated by a credit rating agency. Once they're packaged in this way, the securities are then sold to financially sophisticated institutional investors. When the borrower pays down their student loan, that cash flow is then used to pay down the investor. Sally May and Navian are the two largest publicly traded companies issuing slabs. These assets are underwritten by some of the biggest banks and corporations, like Bank of America, Barclays, JP Morgan, and Goldman Sachs. $92 billion worth of student loans were issued as slabs within the past five years. There are two types of securitized student loans. So you have private student loans and you also have federal student loans that have been securitized. A majority of slabs today, 56% to be exact, are based on loans that were made before 2010 under the Federal Family Education Loan Program, also known as FELP. These loans were enticing for many investors because they came with a federal guarantee that protected them against losses from defaults. For about a decade, FELP securitizations or FELP ABS were the only form of student loan securitizations. It's a program where a private lender originates the loan based on the guidelines that have been put forth by FELP. As long as those guidelines are met, 
the loans are guaranteed by the government. And that guarantee runs between either 97 to 100 percent of the loan balance. But shares of private loans have grown with the recent boom in the private student loan market. The industry is estimated to have grown by more than 70 percent over the past decade. Based on my research across the board with student loans, the biggest sense of security outside of the federal guarantee is the question of whether these loans are dischargeable in bankruptcy. While it is certainly possible, current bankruptcy laws make it extremely difficult for student loans to get discharged compared to other types of debt. For investors, that translates to a lesser risk of default. The securitization of mortgages, all student loan or auto loan, actually has a very positive motivation at the beginning. And that is to mobilize the capital around the world and channel that to the most needed. You are no longer being restricted to your local bank or a specific lender. It's just the whole liquidity enhancement around the world. So that itself is a pretty good idea. But Wall Street sometimes can go a little bit too far. As student loans continue to balloon, Experts have expressed growing concerns surrounding the slabs market. The worry is that slabs could pose a systematic risk to the American economy, similar to how subprime mortgage-backed securities contributed to the crash back in 2008. This is something that came up for me back in 2018 when I began to study student loans. And prior to that, I had been covering mortgages and specifically mortgage-backed securities. I saw the parallels and it really freaked me out because I realized that this cycle was only going to repeat. One of the key ways to uncover the similarities between student loans and mortgages is to look at the affordability issue. You have a bunch of well-intentioned people hoping that their income is going to increase. Now, when the income does not increase, you have a lot of loan debt and nothing to pay it with. The national cohort default rate for student loans has plummeted boosted by the payment pause during the pandemic. But the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau estimates that one in five student loan borrowers have risk factors that could cause them to struggle when federal student loan payments resume in October. I personally do not feel like the inability to pay something back is really needs to be scary. I think what's scary about it and what was scary about 2008 was the tremendous uncertainty that everyone had about what valuation even was. Housing prices were falling dramatically. Nobody knew when housing prices were going to stop falling. And the reason that they were falling was because their valuation had been propped up by the mortgages that supported them. So when the ability to pay was revealed, that's when we saw this tremendous crash in the housing market. When discussing student loan auction rate securities, a type of slab with variable interest rates, Navient, a major player in the slabs market, acknowledged that an economic downturn may cause the market for auction rate notes to cease to exist, which could lead to holders of auction rate securities to experience a potentially significant loss of market value, according to an SEC filing from 2015. But not every expert sees eye to eye. I think to say this market is going to be the trigger of the next financial crisis is really overstated. Nobody's really concerned about the government guaranteed portion of this market. It's really that private credit market. The slabs market is much smaller and therefore pose less of a systemic risk to the economy. There's no way with the depth and the size of the U.S. financial market, there is no way. Increased credit enhancement following the devastation of the 2008 recession was put forth to protect against this exact scenario. If you're looking at Moody's and Fitch, they're raiding these pools with uh, extra vigilance. They are asking for internal credit enhancement, external guarantee, extra credit support in terms of over collateralization. Even if there are substantial charge off and stuff like that, they're mostly going to be absorbed within the internal and external credit en enhancement measures that have been put forth very aggressively after the financial crisis. Recent developments, like the three-year pause on federal student loans and the Biden administration's initiatives to relieve student debt, have sent shockwaves through the slaps market. 
The volume of newly issued slabs dropped from the height of $27.3 billion in 2021 to just $7.1 billion in 2022. I do not think that slabs is a really attractive investment at this point, given that we are in a very high interest rate environment and you look around with risk-free treasury security paying 5%, are you really attracted to slabs at 5%? A lot of investors really don't know much going on with the pool and the transparency is pretty bad. But slabs are not going away anytime soon especially as tuition continues to rise and more borrowers rely on private loans to pay for their education. Private credit has always been used to supplement the federal loan program, and that's going to continue. I think that there will always be a need to do so. To the extent that that continues, those lenders, the lenders of the private credit student loans, will be looking for ways to fund these borrowers. As the student loan market faces a period of tumultuous change, the securitization market must also change and adapt to it in order to thrive. I think in general, slabs is not evil. Slab is just an opportunity for lenders to package illiquid student loans and to create credit enhancement to a point where average investor might participate in financing in these pools. But in the meantime, though, as we move into the future, more education, more transparency about slabs is necessary if this market want to continue and have a healthy contribution to the financing of our nation's uh, student debt.